Hey guys, thank you for tuning in. We are so, so excited to have you here. We are at the Beauty of Black Fine Art Show and we are literally about to interview um, Kevin. He is absolutely awesome. I, I um, got an opportunity to meet Kevin. Um, I think it was last year and because uh, I, I was doing a bronze sculpture of Patty McDaniel. So I got a chance to meet Kevin and his amazingly beautiful wife and we chatted and then they moved here to Fort Collins, which was absolutely awesome. And Kevin just recently was sharing with me about a project he's working on. And I was like, hey, Kevin, let's talk about that project. Let's introduce that project and let's try to raise some money for that project here at the Beauty of Black Fine Art Show. So I am extremely excited about having Kevin here and having him talk about the project. Kevin is a uh, an actor, a producer, the, the guy is just everything. I, you know, I'll let him tell you about himself when he comes on, but he's also Patty McDaniel's great grand nephew. And he'll tell you if I got that right or not, because it's so many, uh, different, uh, facets to it, but I am just so excited to have him. He is such a fun, amazing guy. So I'm going to bring Kevin up without further ado, Kevin. Hey, Louise. Kevin. <laughs> it's great it to is be here. So excited to have you here. Yeah, you I'm know. excited. I'm excited. Um, I'm I'm really happy and, and excited about what you're doing there with the art show. So um I think anyone who sees your artwork and the artwork of other um, artists will be impressed. Well, this is exciting, and I mean just hearing about the project that you're working on um has just taken it to a whole nother level for me. And, you know, because we've already talked about, you know how much I um, love Hattie McDaniel. Right. And, I mean, heck, I, she's sitting in my, my studio right now. Yeah. Nice little clay of her. It's not finished, but still working on it. And that's kind of what brought us together. Um, right. One of the gals from the city uh, found out that I was doing a, uh, creating a bronze of Hattie McDaniel. And she was like, hey, her great Grand nephew, am I saying that right? Yeah, you got it. You got it. My <laughs> great grand nephew is coming to town, and they were doing a dedication. Um, uh, it was June tenth, was it? I think. It that, the event was on the seventh, but her Patty's birthday is on June tenth. Right, and so they were doing a dedication, and you guys came up for that, and decided yeah. that I was so amazing, so you moved here. That was that was the you were the main reason why we moved here. It was. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I know Fort Collins was cool and everything, yeah. but I figured it was just all me. It was all me. It was, it was pretty me. much you, my wife and I discussed it. Before we left, we were like, where are we going to move next? Where, where's our next adventure? And then we met you, and then we we're like, we have our answer. Right there. There it right is. There. <laughs> so, Kevin, um, this is a, a wonderful opportunity. Um, this, they're actually doing, this is a documentary um, that they're doing about Hattie McDaniels. Um, it's the women's, okay, tell me, tell me, um, it's the uh, great Colorado, women's, Colorado Women's Hall of Fame. The Colorado Women's Hall of Fame, right, I because I put it on here, and the other thing that I wanted you guys to definitely have a look at is, yeah, because I, I have it on here, Colorado Women's Hall of Fame, but I also have the uh, QR code because I want you guys to send some money. I want you to donate some money. So I have a QR code over here uh, for you guys to donate some money. Um, while Kevin is talking, I'm going to put the QR code up periodically. Um, and it's Colorado Women's Hall of Fame. Can you tell me a little bit about that, Kevin? Yeah, the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame is a nonprofit. And what they have done over the years, and I believe they started in 1984. And over the years, they've spotlighted women who made amazing contributions to the state of Colorado. And it's, um, I'm not sure of the exact number, I have to look it up, but it's, it's I believe it's um, around 200 women or maybe more that they have inducted over a period of years into their hall of fame. And my aunt Hattie um, was inducted in 2010 now, of course, I didn't know about the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame in 2010. You know, I was in California doing other things. But um, about seven years ago in 2016, 
you know, I was doing research on Hattie and I knew that she lived in Colorado for a time. So I started researching Colorado online and I came across the Colorado, Colorado Women's Hall of Fame and find out that Hattie was inducted. And I was like, here's someone else about her. I didn't know. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I reached out to them and their executive director um, of like the film portion of the hall is Elizabeth Hyde, who they call Betty. And this was 2016. We started chatting and she said, I want to make a film about your aunt. And I said, that would be great. You know, how can I help? And this conversation went back and forth for years. And then COVID happened, that whole two plus year period. So it wasn't until this year recently that we actually met in person for the first time and decided we were going to move forward with this thing and bring me on as a producer so that we, we can make this thing happen. Okay. And so Kevin, what will be your involvement in, in, in this? Um, the first it's twofold. I'll, I'll be one of the main people interviewed for this film. And it's um, these films for the Hall of Fame um, are usually around 26 minutes or so because they're submitted to PBS for Emmy consideration. So their films are capped at 26 minutes and 40 seconds, I believe. So it's a it's a short film in that respect. The budget for these films are usually around twelve thousand dollars. So we're currently raising um, that working to raise that twelve thousand dollars to get this film made and it'll be submitted to PBS next year. Um, so I'll be on camera on this project, but I'll also be one of the producers. I'll be helping with um, finding other subjects to interview that are re related to Hattie's story. Um, I'll be looking through the footage of things that we film. Betty and I will get together and kind of um, map out what the storyline is going to be. We'll just put all the photos and research and stories and stuff that I've experienced and know about Hattie will put it all together in a pot and say, okay, let's find the story that, that, that line that from A to Z that makes the story. And um, so we'll be working on that over the next few months. Okay. I, I keep, it's like, I, I'm turning my mic on and off because it's uh, people are chattering out here and you know we are at the beauty of blackness fine art show right, and so right. there's people kind of having conversations and i don't i want to make sure people are getting all of the information they right, can right. so you're actually raising funds mm -hmm. to help support this event right support this um to get this film made now they've made other films mm -hmm. um on some of the other women that are inducted into the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame. So this is not the first film they've, they've made. They've made others. They've been nominated for, I think, at least 10 Emmy Awards over the years. They've, they've won five, four or five Emmys so far. Um, they just won two Emmys for the last films that they put out um, for last year that you know were shown recently. So they're, they're very successful um, in creating these films. They um, really do a great job. And you can actually see some of the footage on their site at um you know co great um women.org i think it is but i believe you have that that link posted but um right yeah this is this will be another film and they hope to make films of all these women that they have in the hall of fame hattie is seems to be next up on the on the um on their plate and i'm excited about that so i mean this has to be uh, actually amazing. So just as being um, a member of her family, knowing who she is and the struggles that she's gone through, what does this film mean to you? I mean, you know, what, what will this film, what are you hoping that this film, uh, two, two falls here, mm -hmm. what are you hoping to uh, bring about with this film and, and, and what does it mean to you to be able to create this, not only to be a interview, not to only to just be interviewed, but also to be one of the producers. So you have your hand in it. Right. So what, would yeah. the, how, what does that mean? To you? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, that, those are great questions. You should have your own show permanently because you're, you're a great interviewer. <laughs> um, we'll talk about that later, but um, it's, 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 
it's emotional. It's important because this was something that this was my father's um, quest originally. Um, mm. Before I even came into the picture, um, he was working on this for decades. He he was. I mean, the goal was to really put the overall picture of Hattie's story of her life and her career. You know, when you think of Hattie, you think of Gone with the Wind, which was the film she won the Oscar for, the first black performer to win an Oscar. And the second was Sidney Poitier. Most people think Sidney Poitier was the first black performer to win, but he came later, like, you know, uh, almost 30 years later. Um, but with Hattie, um, you know, Hattie used to babysit my father. My father was basically Hattie's kid because she never had kids of her own. So he was coming from this place of being there, being in the moment, being around her, seeing her lifestyle away from Hollywood. She wasn't one dimensional. No woman is one dimensional. I mean, women, you know it. I mean, I, I've seen you, you do so much from what I do know, but that's the story of women. You do all these amazing things. You might get credit for two or three things and you're doing a million things. And that's the thing I've learned about women and appreciate. So I, it makes me think about my mother, my daughters, my sisters, my wife, um, just women that I know, period. So it gives you a greater appreciation of women. And Hattie's story is no different. She went through all these, um, these barriers and ad adversities in her life while trying to make it in a, a white male dominated industry. And you're talking about the 1930s and 40s. I mean, that's, you know, we're talking about a long time ago. So the the whole family thing, my father pursuing this and before he passed away in 2012, I knew that I was going to carry that on and have some things done and completed that he didn't get a chance to, to see to fruition. So um, that's one big part of it. The other part of it, as you asked, I believe, um, having my hands in it as a producer, th that was something that I asked for because I've had many people over the years come to me and say, hey, we want information on Hattie so we can make our project. But they never would ask me, well, what, what do you want from it? So when I um, was communicating with Betty Hyde at the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame, I said, Betty, um, I want to have my hands in this. I want to um, really put my imprint on this like my father wanted to do so we can get this right and really have a real large impact and here we are so yeah i'm really excited about that for for many reasons you're on mute by the way <laughs> you're on mute i am on mute you're back I was all, you know i was all like I got a question. I got a good one. Yeah, you know? yeah, and you look really animated, like you know, you're really. I know, I know. That's, that's me. I'm like, ah, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, for those who don't know Hattie or kind of know Hattie, you know, mm -hmm. it's just like you mentioned, Gone with the Wind, um, different things like that. But Hattie was um she was a well-rounded actress and mm -hmm. and people don't know that because she did some serious roles and all that kind of stuff she was kind of pigeonholed mm -hmm. into that that sort of mammy role yeah. so for those who don't know her can you share um share a little bit more about who this person who hattie was you know, I know she yeah. lived here in Fort Collins for a little bit in Denver yeah. and things like that. But let, just like when you were sharing, hey, she babysitted my daddy. But yeah. sharing who Hattie was, you know, yeah. um, out, even outside of that, because a lot of times we don't see the emotional uh, side of these actresses and actors. All we see is what we see on the screen or what somebody what we've heard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh you know, I've heard people, even even back during Hattie's day, you know, the there were people who loved her and her work, and there were people who criticized her work because of the roles that she was taking. It wasn't like she took those roles specifically, and that's it. That's what Black performers of that era, they were, you, you, it was either that or nothing. You were either, if you were a Black actress or actor, you played a a maid, a butler, a train porter, or you were in the fields picking cotton, or 
you were, you know, you you never were the were in the leading role. And the story was never built around you as a as a black performer. So that was just the, the times that she was in. So her mindset was, okay, let me make the best of this. Let me be professional. Let me portray whatever this character they, they give me to the best of my ability. Let me add layers to it to give that character more than just a yes, ma'am, no, ma'am kind of a you know, personality. So when she would get her script and looked at what's on the written page, she would add stuff to it. She would add layers to it. They didn't know they, when they would see the, the footage later and see her performance, they were blown away because they're like, Oh my gosh, she's jumping off the screen. And if you look at any movie with Hattie in it, she's taking the scene over she, right. from the rest of the characters in the movie. I mean, um, so that was, part of her talent to be able to do that. So you're an actor. I've been accused of that, yes. Right. I know, right? And so <laughs> you're an actor, producer, you're 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 a wide range of things. How did um how did Hattie's life influence you? You know, Hattie didn't directly influence me in the beginning because when I was a kid, I mean my father wasn't talking to me about Hattie. I'm sure that there were conversations in the house between him and my mother. But as a three-year-old or a six-year-old, you know, I'm sure my father wasn't coming up to me saying, hey, by the way, did you see that Hattie McDaniel film? I mean, that, that just wasn't a conversation with a, with a, with a young tyke or whatever, you know, a young kid. Um, and my parents separated when I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. So my father, I didn't see him a lot between ages eight and 18. Um, so it wasn't like I was hearing a lot about Hattie. And the and the amazing part is when I was a kid, I loved black and white classic movies, those old movies like you know, Clark Gable and Catherine Hepburn and Cary Grant and those kind of those kind of movies. But I didn't know at the time when I was watching them as a, a eight-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old, etc., when I would watch those movies my aunt and uncles were in most of those movies. You know, Hattie was in those movies, my great-great-grandmother, Etta, uh, my great-granduncle, Sam, and, and um, I mean, Sam, Otis didn't make it to Hollywood. He died before Hollywood started, really. Mm, but, okay. but Sam, Etta, and Hattie were in a majority of this, these movies with, you know, they were in movies with Humphrey Bogart and Hattie acted with Clark Gable in three movies. They were great friends before Gone with the Wind. Right. Um, so any pretty much any major actor you name, you know, and those were white actors from the from that era, the 30s and 40s, and even into the 50s. A lot of times you would look at that movie and you would see Etta, or you see Sam, or you see Hattie, or sometimes you see them together. Sometimes they were in movies together on rare occasions. So um so I was looking at these movies and then fast forward to when I moved back to California and I'm hanging out with my dad and we're kind of getting to know each other again, you know, filling each other out. And and I'm watching these movies again years later and I'm like, I saw that movie as a kid. Wait a minute. Hattie was in that? Oh, Sam was in that? Etta? And um, like, for example, Etta was in King Kong, the original, 1933. She was on that set. Huh. And so mm -hmm. was my grandfather, her son. He was on the set of King Kong. Um, Sam was the first, and as far as I know, only black actor that was ever on I Love Lucy and had lines. He had mm. two lines. Um, but they had a career before Hollywood. They were in radio. Mm -hmm. They did vaudeville. Um, Hattie right. was a songwriter. So, I mean, you know, um, she did a lot. Of, and, oh, yeah, here's my favorite. Hattie was a drummer and apparently a very great drummer because she would sit in and play drums for people like Jelly Roll Morton, you know. So I was like, what is it that, she, what could she not do? So a large part of these projects and these things that I've been doing over the past few years to get Hattie's name out there is to share that with the world and let her, let them know that she wasn't just gone with the wind and that's it. 
She just right. didn't play maids and that's it. She was doing um, radio for years. She had her own radio show and eventually went to television. So she was on television before she passed away. Um, she fought housing laws in California. Um, they went to court. She, so she was involved in civil rights things. A lot of people don't know that. She was, right, um, they yeah, she was um, donating money to charities, her own money. She entertained the troops during World War II. So she was doing a lot of different things. And she was mentoring other young men and women in the industry and teaching them the do's and the don'ts and how to, to kind of maneuver through that madness of, of entertainment. It is a, a maddening um, industry. Because she used to let people into her home. She used to let other actors into her home. She, she threw her parties family. all the time. Um, from what I understand, Clark Gable never missed her parties. They were like really close and um but yeah she had a lot of people that you know black and white whatever it didn't matter they would come over to a house for parties and every nobody wanted to miss a hattie mcdaniel party i'll put it that way <laughs> and, then, and just like you don't want to miss a louise cutler party it, you know that's she, right you know, that's so. right don't want to miss it <laughs> so yeah hattie, hattie was involved with a lot of things um so it, it wasn't just acting um she had a life as a individual as a human being and she made the most of it yeah that's you know i i've done some you know i've done some research on hattie and i just find it really interesting uh just a lot of the struggles and things that she went through and i you know what really struck me with you and your wife was you know you really never see someone pushing hey, let's get the story out about her. You know, it's like, I was very surprised to, you know, because it's like, other than, <coughs> excuse me, she would just be like, oh, Hattie McDaniel. Oh yeah, she was an actress. But I'm so glad that you are pushing for these kinds of things and saying, hey, she was a person. She was human. Mm -hmm. She she wasn't just an actress. She was, you know, she was a, a, a young lady pursuing a career in a time where, I mean, not just a young lady pursuing a career, but a black woman pursuing a career at a time where, it, you know, they didn't really want her to have one. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, performers, um, you know, whether you were... Uh, um, a black performer, Asian, Hispanic, et cetera, you were, you were kind of a prop. Mm -hmm. You weren't taken seriously. So you were like, okay, well, this person's this particular uh, ethnicity. We're going to put them in this role over here in the background and this person. So, it, you know, I, the people that criticize Hattie, what they, what they have to realize is number one, um, she watched her father, who was a Civil War veteran, um, suffer from his injuries from the Civil War throughout his life until he died, fighting to get a pension from his injuries. And he finally got the pension after fighting for it for almost 20 years. And by that time, it was almost too late, you know. And the pension wasn't even the full pension, it was half a pension. So that was the kind of thing. Uh, um, a person of color would go through, not just in Hollywood, but just in any walk of life in the military. Right. And had he saw her father struggle, and even when he was at 50% of what he used to be, he would still go and do labor jobs. He was trying to support his family. And there were 13 kids. Hattie was the youngest. And some of those kids died at birth. Some of them died early from disease. So she's seeing all these tragedies, all these circumstances, discrimination. Um, and then that happened to her throughout her career. I mean, um, she wasn't invited to the premiere of Gone with the Wind in Atlanta because she was, you know, the Jim Crow laws. Right. She wasn't allowed to be buried at Hollywood Cemetery with her acting peers because she was black. The, the owner of the right. cemetery said, we don't let, we don't bury black people here. So she had to go to Plan B, another cemetery, right. um, where she lived in, um, West Angeles, California. Um, the white neighbors didn't want people other than white people to live in those areas. So they were trying to get them out of there and they formed what they call a restrictive covenant. 
right. which was um, an unofficial and illegal way to say, hey, we protest these people living here. We want to get them out. Right. And of course, they went to court and the, the superior court sided with Hattie and the other neighbors of color. And they won that case. And that was a spark of the California housing laws. So she was going through discrimination throughout that whole time she's acting. And at the same time, while all this discrimination and barriers and who knows it, what else was what she was dealing with, she was still compassionate enough to say, hey, let me mentor other people. Let me entertain the troops. Let me raise war bonds you know, raise money for the war effort for America. She was doing all these things that an upstanding and righteous person would do. Right. At the same time, being told you're less than. That that to me is the most, that's more impressive than the acting and the Oscar and all those things. The fact that right. with all these negatives coming at her, right. she still had the courage and the dignity and integrity to say, well, that doesn't mean I have to be that way. Right. So right. anybody that ever criticized her, they don't think about those things. They don't mm -hmm. look into her life. And she was trying to survive. Any <laughs> Black people just wanted to survive. <laughs> exactly. So you, you exactly. found a way to make some money. You did it. You but did at it. the same time, she was trying to bring something extra to what opportunities that she received, even though they weren't on the level that she, I mean, of course she would have loved to, to do more in Hollywood, right. but she still accomplished a lot regardless. They still couldn't keep her, her name out of the, out of the history books. She's mm -hmm. her, her Oscar. Many of people, many people have said this, her Oscar is probably the most significant Oscar mm -hmm. of all the Oscars, black or white. Yeah. Because yeah. of, I mean, she went up against some heavy hitting actresses, including Olivia, Olivia de Havilland, her co star, and with the win. She beat these actresses out for that Oscar. Right. When you see her performance, you see she deserved it. Mm -hmm. And um, and you're talking about 1939. I mean, the country was just going through the Depression and just about to enter World War II. So imagine that. You're in this film, the biggest film ever at the time. You're in between the Depression and World War II, and you're a black woman on top of that. And you're dealing with all that. And your husband is trying to screw you out of your money. So, I mean, just imagine all those things that she's going through. Mm -hmm. and the fact that she wanted to have a child and never could have a child, that broke her heart. Mm -hmm. So she was able to still rise above all of those things. Mm -hmm. That's why what you're doing is amazing. That's why black art is amazing. When you look at black art, you see the emotion in the art. You see it, you feel it. And that's what makes the show you're doing really important. Anybody that has seen black art from whatever country, because we're all over the world. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. You go to London, Africa, South America, Australia, here in North America, Mexico, Cuba, it doesn't matter. When you see black art, you're seeing emotion, you're seeing spirituality, you're seeing something powerful. Yeah. And that's why I was so honored to be a part of this, that you um, came up with this amazing show and concept for me to be on here and to be able to share what, what I'm working on. Well, we're excited about having you and definitely excited about Sunday because you're going to come and actually speak in person on Sunday, I yeah. think around 12 noon or something like that. We'll see right. you. Um, so people can come out Sunday and actually hear you speak in person and talk with you in person. Mm -hmm. But share with me how um, how can they go about making a um, how can they go about supporting this event? How can they go about supporting this event? And I just sure. put up the QR code. They can actually click on that and it will take them to the website. So just right. share with them how they can go about supporting this event. Yeah, there are various ways. Like you mentioned the information that you've put up. Um, they can go to the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame um, website and to the donate portion of it. And there are two ways to donate on that site. 
you can send in a check and in the memo of the check you can write hattie film or something of that nature at least the, the, the word hattie now if you make a payment through paypal on their website i'm not 100 percent sure that they have a spot in there where they do mention, they do they do okay so they, they can do. mention so they can mention hattie um um another way is to um on my instagram at, at kevin john golf i also have um something posted on there for, for donating as well and there's a button they can click and donate it goes to the same site to the colorado women's hall of fame and if anyone that is donating or thinking about donating or just has questions about hattie um, they can write me at estate at hattie and any emails i'll get i'll do my best to answer all of them okay it's um estate estate at Hattie McDaniel, H A T T I E M C D A N I E L dot com. All right, Kevin, I'm trying to spell it out. <laughs> M C D A N I. Say it again. Okay, M C D A. Yeah. Estate at Hattie, and then her last name McDaniel. M C D A N I E L dot com. Yeah, okay. and if you if you write, you can write me at that site. Anyone can write me at that site, um, and I'll also be posting information about the film on that site pretty soon, and also other things that are happening with um, with Hattie in regards to other things that are coming up um, with her missing Oscar of fifty plus years. Um, mm. My wife and I will be traveling to um, Wichita, Kansas, to accept the key to the city. From the mayor of Wichita, Brandon Whipple. So nice. we'll be doing that soon. Um, so there, and of course, I'm working on a book on Hattie um, mm -hmm. that'll come out the, probably the first quarter of next year, 2024. So a lot of things are going to happen between now and the end of the year, but also um, the first three or four months of um, next year, there'll be some things happening. So if you go to the website, HattieMcDaniel.com, um, I think in the next day or two, I'm going to be posting new information on there. But there's already a lot of information on there about Hattie, things that she accomplished, things that she went through, some of her personal quotes, um, photos, films that she was in, some of her filmography, a lot of information on there. And we update it constantly. Um, so that's another good source to go to. OK. Well, this has been, uh, I wanted to put that up there, HattieMcDaniel.com. Yeah. Okay. This has been amazing, um, Kevin. I am really excited about it, and Thank I'm you. hoping and praying that you make all the money that you can, and I would <laughs> implore anyone that's mm -hmm. watching um, to make a donation. I'm going to put that, um, hold on, I'm sitting here. Oh, I put it on a ticker. I'm going to take it off the ticker so you guys mm -hmm. can see it up close and personal <laughs> for the Colorado uh, greatwomen.org slash donate. Right. Um, and actually, I'm going to um, hold on. I'm going to take that and I'm going to send it via the chat so that way it will be in the chat so you all you have to do once i put it in the chat the comment chat section you all you have to do is click on it so i've literally sent it through the chat so right. anybody that's watching or on it you'll be able to just click on it through the chat so if that's you're it. on facebook or the beauty of watching spine our show you just click on that and it'll literally take you to that link so i would encourage you guys to definitely um donate to this cause i think it's absolutely amazing we're actually here at the media blackness fine art show we're actually going to be taking a lot of the funds that are in our boutique because we're selling things you know especially our things like our cups and key rings and um the year's posters uh we're taking a percentage of that and we're donating that to the Hattie McDaniels film. So we're here looking at raising money and I've had two artists that said they wanted to donate art to wow. that um, so that we can raise money. So Friday, if we were in town, we're gonna do a silent auction of two pieces along with this absolutely phenomenal bag 
wow. by a young lady um, by the name of Natalie. We'll be donate. We'll be auctioning off. This will be a part of the auction. It is really neat. This is a handmade backpack by Natalie that we'll be auctioning off during um, during the Friday uh, the um, reception, the artist reception on Friday. So definitely. Um, you know, bid on that bag. <laughs> it's really well made. Yeah. I'm a, uh, I was a tailoring major, so I am a stickler for well made things. And this young lady, she's 19 and she is doing remarkable things. Wow. Uh, so, and she was very honored that I was donating the funds for the Hattie McDaniel fan, um, uh, film. So that was a plus for her. She really was excited about it. I actually wow. did an interview with her that'll be airing. Tomorrow, I did a pre-recorded interview with her that'll be airing tomorrow um, and got a chance to talk with her because I've been watching her since she was young and she has just become so amazing. But Kevin, before yeah. we wrap up, is there anything that you would like to say or share um, with everyone before we wrap up? Yeah, first off, bravo to Natalie. Bravo to Natalie. That's a beautiful bag. Um, love it. Um, secondly, bravo to you for what you've been doing. Um, when we first met a year ago, um, a little over a year ago, and I, uh, you invited my wife and I to your home to see this Hattie piece, this bronze that you're working on. We, you know, I was totally floored by that. And the way we met was just, it wasn't accidental. You know, that was the universe, you know, having its say. And, um, and I also like to mention that, um, what you're doing and continue to do and, and things you've done in the past that I probably don't even know about. Um, I mean, everybody knows Louise Cutler. Everybody knows her art in, in that in area. And I'm sure outside of the area. So um, I definitely applaud you for what you're doing. And um, I look forward to being there Sunday. If um, you know, if any questions come up, Q and A's um, email me or in person, I'm, I'm happy to, answer any questions and you know i'm i'm just excited to to be a part of this in some way so thank you um to the amazing louise cutler yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it now <laughs> all right thank you kevin we will see you, you on sunday we'll see you then Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. That was so exciting. I would encourage you to go on the website and make a donation. Hattie was absolutely a phenomenal actress, but she was also a phenomenal human being. And I must, I believe her story should be told. And so I would like for you guys to take some time and go visit the Colorado Great Women's.org and make a donation in support of the Hattie McDaniel film that Kevin is actually going to be working on, not just interviewing with, he's going to actually do it. He's be one of the producers. So definitely go in and check that out and make a donation. Now I'm going to keep saying make a donation. And if you are like, hey, but I want something, come out to the Beauty of Life and Fine Art Show and bid on this amazing bag by Natalie. Bid on that amazing bag and you can take that home with you. All of the funds from the auction will be going to the Hattie McDaniels funds. And we also have, we'll also have two pieces of artwork that are also going to be a part of that auction. So definitely come out. It's going to be exciting. These artists are doing some amazing stuff here. And if you haven't thought about yet or haven't come today, come on out to the Beauty of Black Inspiring Art Show and hang out with us. Buy some art. There's some amazing artists here. Come and buy some art and come and just be supportive and say hi. When you come through, come and say hi to me. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for stopping by and spending this time with us. We will see you. Oh, make sure you tune in tomorrow because Natalie will be doing a pre recorded interview with Natalie tomorrow. So that's scheduled. And so look forward to that. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.